December 28th, 9.51am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Wag. What's the big idea? S -s Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my running with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope one karma doesn't push him too hard. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd ch cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya. Maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. Trying to electrocute anyone on your way out. That's not how a stun gun works. Like, you don't stay electrified for days after being zapped once, I'm pretty sure. <sighs> Whoa, yeah, pal. <laughs> What's got into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after the shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. December 28, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 3. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defence is ready, Your Honour. Prosecution is ready. Uh, uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on. Come on, don't be awed into silence for every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Kamm, your opening statement? Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defence asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defence to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. How does his voice go again? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. Uh, I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Why I left court. Uh, how did his voice go? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. It's this, this was it. Yeah. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm gonna prove it. Okay, um... 
I can't quite remember what I'm supposed to do in this trial, so I'm gonna press a few things and then hopefully I'll start remembering. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witnesses testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be this, the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Uh, yes, 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 Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now, over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. I mean, I've said it twice. If that if that's over and over, then all right. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho ho! Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. Oh, is it Robert Hammond? Is it Gregory Edgeworth? It's the only one who could possibly still be alive. <laughs> His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident! Biggest the judge would have heard of it. It's such a famous case. But what does this mean? <laughs> Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, and I've got nowhere else to go. Nick! How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see, that makes sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. W why The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff. Hey, yep. W what? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we'll not be able to prove his identity. I guess DNA testing just, just isn't a thing in this universe. Because, I mean, he still has 
fingers and hair and spit and all sorts of things that you could test. No. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh. Hmm. Hmm? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what happened. I know everything. I. I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have braced his fingerprints. What do I do? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? W w what is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my... proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> this series is just so ridiculous. The parrot is about to become a witness. <laughs> but order, order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Objection. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please, be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. When Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot, she's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. <laughs> That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem, very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Who is your owner? Hello, hello, Squawk? Hmm, certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I... I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Okay, so we are now cross-examining a parrot. Uh, we want to basically press this statement. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. But, right, uh, what do I say? As I recall, two days ago... Flashback, flashback... Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk? Don't forget deal six. Squawk? If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with deal six. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello? Hello? Squawk? That's not what you said you're supposed to say? Ugh. That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. 
Hello? Hello? Squawk? Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't you say it? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? The answer is yes, he did. Um, we have to fast forward through this so we can get the opportunity to ask for something else. These other two pieces of information, thankfully, will help us. Maybe I should get her to say her name? Polly, 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 what's your name? Polly, Polly, Squawk? Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? In fact, it does. Yes, it does. Huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... It's uh, actually this here case file. If you take a look here, uh, you flip through here, and you can see that after Yanni was arrested, his fiancée, Polly Jenkins, has the same name as the parrot. Take that! The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us, or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Ah, uh, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I gonna find that? Where am I gonna find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. We just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Thankfully, there's one more question we can ask Polly, so... Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. It's interesting that the parrot is obeying everyone's instructions for testimony and all that. And going back to be cross-examined at appropriate times. So yeah, we're gonna ask the other question. What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Holly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? 1228, 1228. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. <laughs> Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Turns out it's also in the DL6 case file, so if we just bring it up, you can see that the date of the DL6 incident was 12-28-2001. 1228. Squawk? 
Is the L6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Oh, whoops, I did the wrong voice. Sorry. What is that obsession you have with this case? <laughs> Mr. Wright, where in that file is something relating to that safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 in on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28? Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah. Use the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Bah. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. It's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting. Fifteen years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma? Where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgement on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. Did someone just say objection? 
It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgement. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's getting, going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. It's weird that no one but me can hear what Maya's saying. Like, if she said that, you know, out loud in the courtroom, the judge is going to be like, oh, okay, well, I guess Edgeworth is guilty then. But, I don't know. Uh-oh, what do I do? Objection! The judgement has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. It's not the same. Like, this, this, this court, court system, it hasn't come up yet, but they do have double jeopardy. So if you've, been te if you've been found not guilty, you cannot be found guilty after that. And Edgeworth has been found not guilty, so they can't really continue the trial at this point, even though they think they can. It's... Uh, I don't know. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years. I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant, declared innocent, is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah. It's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here, right now. We try this man for his crime 15 years ago. I think... I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. December 28, 2.24pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, right? I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you killed- you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. But, it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. <sighs> Again, manslaughter exists. Like, you- you- you can kill someone without intending to kill someone, and that isn't murder. Wait. <sighs> this is crazy, just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe your nightmare. W what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right.
December 28, 2.30 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, through point, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the Dale 6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. On Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. And testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That would be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please. Please. The DL6 Incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. The DL6 incident. Okay, so there's a couple of things that are suspicious here. Uh, the main thing I would wonder about is the fact that there was a single gunshot. Because if we have a look at a... Uh... Well, there's a bullet from the gunshot, but if we have a look at the uh... court record here... The murder weapon was fired twice, as you can see here. One bullet, but the murder weapon was fired twice, so there must have been another shot somewhere. And... That doesn't seem to have been possible from what we've heard, so let's ask Edgeworth what is up. Objection! Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dra you do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can do that. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Well, it's the victim data. That's the one that talks about the murder weapon being fired twice. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm... Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. 
it might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright? The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Yes, actually. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. Wh what Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Yes, actually. Uh, if you look at this photograph of the murder, you can see there's Gregory, who has been shot. You can also see that there is a very visible bullet hole up in the top of the top... Top, um... In the... In the up, up the top of the picture there. <laughs> you can see there's a hole there. That's a bullet hole. Uh, so clearly one bullet went into Gregory, and the other one must have gone through there. Yes? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired? Where? It's kind of strange that they can't see the really obvious bullet hole in the picture, but whatever. Your Honor, please. Please get a clue. <laughs> Show the judge's contradiction in the photo. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus... Someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Uh, order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. M Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. Case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Well, then don't call it a bullet hole. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tisk tisk tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? 
the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. N no But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems like we've fi that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, but that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guild. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank, I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Objection! Your Honor. I... I object. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oof. Nick. I... I don't know, his case is perfect. Oh no. Bro. It must exist. The second bullet. Wh what? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist? But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet! It, uh, it existed! What? We've just heard proof that it did not exist. Uh, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. Uh, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Ah, the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Ugh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? J just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. 
and they left with the second bullet still inside of them? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. There's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator. Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges, and the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mr. Wright, you're truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I can't deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of a shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. You probably saw this coming. <laughs> oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem... Dazed. Uh, n no, Your Honor. Well, you have indi indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh oh. Should I come out and say it now? Mm, yeah, let's say it. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, it's a certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v -v Ugh. My, my hands are shaking. The what? Von Karma. Von Karma? You mean, THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Uh... You... don't object? Hm. I see no need. Why honour this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor to operate on me. Have him testify. Uh, Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is! It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Uh, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? 
That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Tisk tisk tisk. Well, Mr. Ray, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. Wh what? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... All right, so he got shot. There's a bullet lodged in his body. He doesn't undergo surgery. That means the bullet is still there. Which means we should be able to find it with an appropriate piece of equipment. When karma is perfect, he wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that one karma perform performs surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. Y you refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? I mean, he could have some other metal piece inside, like a replaced shoulder or something. How old's the guy? He's 65, he might have a replaced shoulder. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said that we had to end it right here, right now. Mm. Mm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Beep, beep, beep. It reacted, something inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so, I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Who must prove... Who must prove something here. <laughs> Not I. M Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. W what You were close, one day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. W what who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Okay, so... We know that the bullet came from the gun in the DL6 incident. And we have the other bullet that was fired 
from the gun in the DL6 incident. And they have ballistic markings. And as we all know, fingerprints are like the ballistic markings of your hands. Th that's... a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Groggy Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyse both bullets. Then, if the marking is matched, we would know that both bullets have been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Mmm. Mmm. Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Rawr! Rawr! He scream. <laughs> that scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away! Get away from my father! Bang! Wag! It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Mr. Von Karma? Walk, Edgeworth, Edgeworth, only you would dare defy me. So, it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I, I'll bury you, I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death, death. Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you'll have to be penalised. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalised? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black, the lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. 
Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk tisk tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge. But what? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Yay! Yay, yay, yay! Woohoo! That is all. This court is adjourned. December 28th, 5.38pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? When Carmel looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try, thank you. I... I see. Thank you, right. Y you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm. I... I see. Ahem. Whoop. <laughs> I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this... unguarded. Hey, y'all. Lotta. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank you all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at ya. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. And it's Keyonce. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right. Right? 
No, uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Alright. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh. What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? N -n nick Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No, Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Brr. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. D death. The death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I'd known I'd become a prosecutor. Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. It was. Wanna switch, right? Hey, y'all! Line up, we'll take a photo! Hey, photo time, let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. So, wait, does, does Nick now live at the law offices? Because, I mean, that's a bit weird. <laughs> In his office, office... I don't know, it's strange. Hmm? What's this, a letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? Gah. The first trains for the mountains have already, st have already left. To the station. I guess I'm too late. Hey! N nick Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. 
be good, okay? Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. The evidence is this. The steel six bullet. As you might remember, it was in Maya's hand after um Kam Von Karma took all the evidence and tased everyone. So yeah, it's this bullet. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced you'd taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL six, but you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma, and you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm gonna complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So... This is it. See you soon, Maya. Baby. Thanks, Nick. I love her so much. So precious. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Huh, don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. And here's the credits. <laughs> uh, there's more dialogue in the credits, so I'll keep going. Hey pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Graphics by Kumiko Sukane. <laughs> Away, can I probably? Huh? Nick? No, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but he's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Graphics by Tatsuo Iwamoto. Who? Right. Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. In programming by Noriyuki Otani. Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know, I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. I'm pretty proud of that guy. Programming by Masukatsu Endo. Ah, uh, him. Hm. Oh, it's you, Phoenix, right? Ah, uh, yes, Mia's understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. Haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. 
Music by Masakazu Sugimori. Phoenix Wright? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. You know they're finally bringing some hammers to moment every day because I would rather my idea is I used to feel like words for reading these days. I'm supposed to feel straight amount. Sound effects by Atsushi Mori. I think I saw another person with the last name Mori earlier. Pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. <laughs> oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know. It's kind of weird that they got a dude to play the Pink Princess. Hmm. Publicity by Hiroshi Nakaya and Ayumi Tarada. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold sitting under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? And you're by Yumiko Uchida. I don't know what you need a manual for for this kind of game, but whatever. Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. Alright. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. Well, you're in the studio now. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh. What a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. That was kind of an uncomfortable joke, honestly. Producer Atsushi Inaba. You can't actually skip this, by the way. You have to go through all this. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Huh? Me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Executive producer Shinji Mikami. Lots of Japanese names because it's a Japanese game. There's the picture. There's Mia. This is so cute. Also, Edgeworth's checking out Nick the. Very gay. Capcom. And that's the end of Turnabout Goodbyes. Oh. It is the end of Turnabout Goodbyes. However, <laughs> a brand new episode has been added. Uh, so this one is called Rise from the Ashes. It's the only case in the series that isn't called Turnabout something. Um, I believe I mentioned this earlier, but when this game first came out in Japan on the Game Boy Advance, those first four cases were the only ones that existed, which is why case four ends with the credits like that. So this case is a bonus case that was added when they brought out the DS version of the game. Um, and in the next video we'll start playing it. Um, this case was kind of polarizing. It was written after the original trilogy, and it had... It did, did a couple of things differently in a certain way. Some people didn't like it. I quite like it. Um, I think it doesn't handle the investigation very well. Uh, in the same way the other cases in this game, like the first game, didn't handle it very well. But I still like it. And you can see there's some pretty cute characters. So, I like it. Uh, yes, I'd like to say it. Anyway, yeah, next time, Rise from the Ashes, Day 1, Investigation. Um, but that's it for now. That's that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm sorry this video ended up, like, really long, but that was all one big segment. I thought about cutting it up, but I didn't think there was a really good spot to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> bye! That was a bit loud, sorry. Bye! Bye, bye, bye. There we go.